Okay, look, you've just hit your second shot short of the green. This is an approach shot. It could be anywhere between 80 to just 40 yards short of the green, maybe even 30 yards short of the green. You need elevation. We've got water to go over. You need the ball landing softly. How do you get backspin? What club should you use? How do you make sure you don't thin it or fat it along the ground into the water on these shots? I want to give you now my top five tips to master this approach play. So let's get cracking. Tip number one. If you want to master your approach play, you need to realize that approach play is very different to power play. It is a different motion. I want you to, the simplest way to describe this is look, you're only there, just there. If I'm going to throw a ball to you, I can relax and just throw a ball to you. My stance is narrow, I'm relaxed, there's no necessary to get aggressive here because you're just there. But if you went 50 yards or 100 yards further, I might naturally get wider, my intent now would lead to a very different motion, more aggressive, more movement of the body, more shifting and pressure, more power, more slingshot, all right? We don't want that with approach play because you can't control the strike very well and you certainly won't be control your distance. So that is the ste uh, step number one, tip number one. Set up in a way that matches the intent of the shot. So this is an approach shot. It's a calm shot. The stance is naturally narrower. The ball position is just inside my left foot, my lead foot here by about a club width. And I'm relaxed. My pressure is on the balls of my feet and I'm in a nice relaxed position. I'm also, the pressure favors my lead foot by about 60, 40. Why? For the same reason we just talked about. I'm not trying to shift pressure. I want to maintain it there. I don't need this aggression. So I keep my pressure on that lead side here so that I can get a consistent contact and position of that club arriving on the ground. If I move around, it's going to be a lot harder for me to get that club arriving at the same spot every single time. That is tip number one. Nice relaxed position. The intent is a calm swing. My pressure's on my lead side. And then we just make a very calm golf swing. Nothing complicated whatsoever. All right. So that is tip number one. Now, tip number two, you need to sync up the body. So again, it's calmness, it's control. When you're going for your power game, there's a bigger platform. There's more rotation. Look how my hips are rotating. The club lags behind and gets slung like a catapult. When you're approaching it, everything needs to sync up a lot more. What do I normally see? If you're fatting it, thinning it along the ground, struggling with contact, I see this so much. The arms dominating the swing, literally the arms leaving the body, out of sync immediately, and then everything is controlled with the arms. It's not synced. It's so hard to control strike, almost impossible to control distance control. So how do you go about syncing them up? Well, it's not dissimilar to throwing. So watch this. If I throw, I want you to imagine throwing underarm. Look at the, where my shoulders are working. Trail shoulder works up, lead shoulder works down. Then on the way through, trail shoulder works down, lead shoulder works up. And literally it's like this, backwards and forwards. All right? Now, one way you can feel this is get a heavy weight. So if you just try and swing this with my arms, that's going to be really difficult. But watch, I'm going to use my core, my torso, my core. Look at this. I was going to throw this. It would feel like this. I, it feels like I'm going over my trail shoulder and then watch this. I'm going to throw it over my left shoulder. So I'm not throwing it over there because I don't have any strength there. I'm throwing it over my left shoulder. Now, technically, what this looks like is this. Your lead side bends on the way back, your trail side extends, and then on the way through, your trail side bends and your lead side extends. So it looks like this. Throw over my shoulder. Watch this. Over my right shoulder, over my left shoulder, over my trail shoulder, over my lead shoulder. So we're now able to stay nice and centered over the ball and create space and coordination to swing. Let's have a look at this in action. So we've got a pressure on our lead side and all we're gonna do now is, is get the bends here, so I go over my trail shoulder, and then again over my lead shoulder. Let's have a look at this, nice and simple. No 
nothing complicated. Spin down. That wasn't a bad shot. Look, if you're enjoying the video, do me a favor, press that like button. And of course, look, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing by pressing the red button and the bell button so I can notify you every time I release a video just like this one. A little bit too far, okay? So, which brings us now you're starting to get the practice. Now, remember, this might take some time for you to do, and that's absolutely fine. Go away and practice it. Then once you get the consistency in your strike, now it's time, then you can start working on distance control. What club should you use? How do you know what club to use? Go to the range first. So here's what I recommend. Approach play. Get a, I'm using a 56 degree at the moment, but ignore me for a second. 60 degree, 56 degree, um, your pitching wedge, go to the driving range and your approach play is all about controlling distance. Therefore, you don't want to have to have any hit in there. So here's what I suggest. Grab, a, say, uh, your sand wedge and play your sand wedge and just swing to about halfway here and then nice and easily, again, throw the club over your lead shoulder. So we're going to simply swing to about halfway throw the club over the lead shoulder. And that for me is usually around, yeah, 50 yards, okay? Now I know this, that with my 56, that goes 50 yards. Do you know what? You need to know this too. Because once you do, now you've got an idea of how far that club goes from just this position. Then what I might do is swing to about three quarter swing here, and then throw it over my lead shoulder. Let's see how far that one goes. That now gets me to the back flag, okay? So I've now got one club, let's look at the yardages, 75, yeah, it's about right, to nice and simple. So I've now got two yardages. So I now know that this swing goes 50 and this swing goes about 75. Brilliant. Now if I wanted more yardages, I would repeat the exact same process with different clubs, all right? So know how far each club goes. You must have that down. Then just simply write it down. I sometimes get a piece of paper. I've advised people to put it on the top of the club. Half swing goes this. Three quarter swing goes this. That's it. You've got your strike. Now, the next thing to do, you take it to the golf course. How do you take it to the golf course? Fourth tip, you need to know your distance. How do you know your distance? So many people guess. I use a range finder or a laser. You can do GPSs. I prefer these because they are more accurate, all right? Now, knowing your yardage, ping it out there. Because why is it important to know your yardage? Well, you've just done all the work building your strike, building the control in and doing the practice. Well, I now know I've got 50 yards. Okay, which is 50 yards? Oh yeah, 50 yards is my sand wedge that goes halfway. Okay, great. Okay, let's do that. Right, so sand wedge, halfway, is about 50 yards. Makes sense. So there we go, it's gonna come down, right? So I now know, so I've got a better chance now of then get, making sure my practice, all the hard work I've done in practice, pays off on the golf course. Know your yardage, it's tip number four. Laser it, so, so important. Um, if you want to know what laser I'm using, I'll put a uh, link in the description box below. It's very, very simple. So, tip number five is more of an advanced tip. You're striking it now. You're judging your distance control. You might want some spin. You might want to control your trajectory. How do you do this? Very simple. You want a higher shot? No problem. Finish higher. Just like if you were throwing a ball, right? If I'm throwing a ball, where am I going to throw it? If I throw it high, where's I finish? High. If I throw a ball low, I'm going to throw it low. I'll finish low. So watch this. I'm now going to play a higher shot. Watch this. Look how high that goes. There we go. Beautiful. Stops with a bit of backspin, right? Nice and high. Watch this. Now I'm going to play this one a little bit lower. And how do I do this? Do I change my ball position? You could do. Move it back if you want, but I don't. I like to just focus on just as if I would throw. I'm going to finish lower to throw it lower. Okay, so I've got all the things in place that we start with, all the first four tips. Now all we're going to do is simply finish lower. Look at the difference in that flight. Hey, Presta. Yeah, much, much lower. 
And because it's lower, it's gonna come with less backspin sometimes as well. So you're gonna get more of a release. So those five tips will hopefully massively help your approach play around the green. Let's just summarize. Tip number one, recognize there is a difference between your approach play and your power play. Approach play, it requires karma, gentle, narrow stance, ball position inside lead heel, and weight stays on the left side, on my lead side, 60-40, nice, simple. Tip two, sync up the body. How do you do this? Very simple. Realize that we, we do not want to be just have an arm swing. Arm swing kills so many golfers. Get the torso, the core working as if you would do holding a heavy weight. This was really heavy and I was throwing it. I'd get it throwing it over my lead shoulder, throw it over my trail shoulder here, throw it over my lead shoulder. Get that sense, then everything's going to sync up in a nice, easy way. Once you've done that, you've got your ball striking. Learn your distances. How? Go to driving range, take your free clubs, lob wedge, 56, pitching wedge, go half, find out how far it goes, go three quarter, find out how far it goes, write those distances down, put them on the club, now you know, yeah? Now that will change over time, brilliant. If it does, then adjust it, right? Fourth, know your yardage. Get yourself a laser, priceless. For me, everyone goes, oh, I, I know my yardage. Do you know what? Do you know it or do you think it? Because when I ping this, I don't think it's 60 yards. I know it's 60 yards. That is going to give me the confidence to commit. So when I've got 50 yards and I know it's 50, I know, even though there's water there, if I swing to here and here, it's going to go over. No problem whatsoever. Why? Because I'm not guessing. And finally, once you've done all that, control your trajectory. How? And why would you need to do it? Well, control it. Finish high for higher, finish low for lower. Why is that important? Well, do you know what? If it's windy, you don't want to be floating the ball high up in the air. You, you'll lose the control. Get it in lower, let it chase. We've seen here, for instance, look, there's a two tier. If I play this in lower and the flag's at the back, I don't want to be necessarily risking flying this ball back, uh, the ball all the way to the back. That could be risky with the water behind. Chasing it in a little bit lower, I can land it on the bottom level and chase it up. All these things can really, really help your confidence with the approach play. So I really hope you enjoyed this training. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Maybe share it with one of your friends. And of course, look, if you're new to the channel, come and join the community. It's completely free by pressing that subscribe button and the bell. And remember, there's a free practice plan for all my videos in the description box just below the like button. Just download it. It's complete for free. But until next week, have a great golfing week.